So, two new dinosaurs have just been discovered over on the Isle of Wight, not too far from me actually. Now, get this, they have called one of them the Hell Heron. What a psychotic name to give a dinosaur. So it must have been pretty ferocious, you would think. Anyway, let's look at this video from the Southampton University and see what they've got to say about it. We have two new spinosaurs. Uh, these are large theropod predatory dinosaurs that we are describing in the new paper uh, and they're from the Isle of Wight. Straight away, I find it fascinating how they're still discovering new species of dinosaurs and other creatures, you know, just just washed up on the beach almost, uh, you know, that people are walking along every day. To make these discoveries still, I think, is incredible. And you see the, the that first image. I'm going to go back to it. Um, but you see these images that they can they can create. And you think, well, how do they know that it looked exactly like that? You know, from, from the folds over the head, for example. How do they know these things? But technology and the genome uh, discovery has, has, is incredible now that they really can do that. And it's like, for example, with the T-Rex, how uh, they're pretty certain it actually had feathers, for example. Uh, the problem is they found that out after a lot of the the movies and things showed them without. So, I, yeah, fascinating stuff. Fascinating stuff to, to how the technology that we've got now and the techniques can show us these sort of images. It's incredible. Predatory dinosaurs that we are describing in the new paper, uh, and they're from the Isle of Wight. To have two individuals uh, basically come out from the same beach uh, was quite a unique find. The thing that was really exciting was that they're not the same animal as Baryonyx, which was discovered in Surrey about 30 years ago. Even more exciting, they're not even the same species as each other. They're new species. We had two snouts, we had two brain cases, so we knew there was going to be two individuals in there at least. I was one of the people who were lucky enough to be involved with finding some of this amazing spinosaurid material. I saw some bones sticking out of the rock and I excavated this carefully and we took it down to the museum. I paced out how long it was from the bottom of the steps down onto the beach to the place I'd found. And I kept going back there. Several months later, I found a hole there. And I thought, oh, I'm too late. Someone else has dug something out of here and it's probably the rest of the back of the skull. And indeed it was, it was the brain case. And that was uh, a chap called Brian Foster. And just as it was getting dark, I spotted a, a, a section of bone that was sticking out of a sandstone nodule, uh, sort of, which had been revealed by the beach. It's, uh, it's very rare to find dinosaur bone for me. So, uh, so finding any bone is uh, exciting, but. I, I assume that, um, you know, these sort of, these sort of dinosaurs, over time, uh, land goes up and overlaps each other with the tectonic plates and things. Um, but I assume because where the beach is constantly eroding, um, the water, sorry, is constantly eroding the rocks and things, it shows things that you wouldn't have seen before. I, I, I'm pretty sure that's the way it works quite often. Um, so as it says, you see a little bit of a, a nodule kind of sticking out of the rock because of the water that's eroded, eroded the rock away. It, it's incredible. And to find two in, the, in more or less the same location, I, in, crazy. So the usual finds are of vertebrae and you can usually recognize those, but this, this bone was a very peculiar shape. So we named one of them Ceratosuchops uh, inferodius. Ceratosuchops means uh, horned crocodile face. And then Inferodios, the species name, means uh, hell heron because of the presumed ecology. So herons often are thought to be fishers. They catch fish, but they have actually got quite a wide um, diet. Uh, and we named the second specimen uh, Ripara veneta milneri. Uh, Ripara veneta just means riverbank hunter for the same reasons. It's eating and catching stuff. So as I was saying, the whole ability, so if that is what they found, that so they, they found the, the, the skull cavity, and they found the tip of the, the nose, the mouth, the nose, um, to then be able to piece the rest of that together, how they do it is, is, is far beyond me. Um, but it's just incredible that, that 
as I said, we've developed so well technology wise and genome wise that you can piece things together. You know, we can do, we, we can do it even with with um, Neanderthal bones and, you you know, you see the recreations of them. A fascinating stuff. It really, really is. Um, and it's interesting to hear why they've called it, for example, the hell, the hell heron, you know, because of the way they've worked out what's what sort of the way the bird, I say bird, you know what I mean, uh, how, how it feeds like a heron and it's got those simi- similar similarities. However, I think it's about nine meters long. A heron certainly is not nine millimeters long, which makes you then think, how the hell were these able to fly? You know, because birds these days, they are able to fly because they're so light, because their bones are hollow quite often. I think I'm talking right. Surely at that at that size that they wouldn't have, you know, they wouldn't have had, they would have been too heavy, but no, apparently not. No, in and around water. And Milnery uh, refers to Dr. Angela Milner, who worked at the Natural History Museum, who sadly passed away very recently. And she was uh, you know, a key player in Spinosaur paleontology. They have a long snout, which is quite narrow. They have these long conical teeth. And this is suggestive of an animal which has a, a piscivorous diet, fish-eating diet. And this is uh, the brain case and uh, back of the eye socket of Ceratosucops and they articulate relatively well. And what we notice here is the uh, extremely large, what we call an orbital boss. It's basically just a really quite bulky protrusion of bone, which gives that eyebrow region a really sort of gnarly uh, appearance. From the small boy. I just want to have a, a close up look at that again. How, how do they know, as I said, the folds over, over the back of the head almost? Um, it's how do they know there's the horn on on the top almost and and it's interesting to know that they worked out the the eye area the that that protrudes uh, it's it's amazing what they can just see but i suppose it's one of those things that if you're almost an expert in a certain field that actually don't do much thinking you know why um why certain things are the way they are um but if you're an outsider that isn't doesn't specialize in that you think how how do they know that uh, appearance. From the small boy that loved dinosaurs to actually being up here, being part of the group, it couldn't get better than that really. As an amateur, it's been a great privilege to be involved in a major project like this. Just to have, you know, two well, relatively well-preserved spinosaurs was monumental. They are some of the largest, most charismatic, unusual theropod dinosaurs that you could imagine, and we have two of them. It's phenomenal. There you go. Two new dinosaurs discovered. Incredible. Incredible that they keep finding these new new species. It's it's mind blowing to think what else have we not discovered? You know, what else is out there that we have not discovered? Um well done, guys at Southampton University. Um and any of the amateurs that are looking just off their own back, it's it's um, brilliant to look back at our own history because looking back sometimes can show us the way forward. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. If you did enjoy it, make sure you check out Southampton University's channel, link down below, and I will catch you next time.